two L's up, salute. Welcome back, my peoples, to another episode of Life and Times of Rack Low. Yeah, yeah. Yo, this flick right here is crazy classic. I remember this day clearly. Yeah, yeah. We was on, you know what I mean, the rooftop of Marcus Garvey Village. We all got fly and crispy, you know what I'm saying? Just chilling, just, you know what I mean, lounging. You know what I mean? I remember, like, in Bristol Park, and then we decided, you know what I mean, to take some flicks, and we took it up on a rooftop. It was just like a whole classical environment, something different, original, and something that, you know what I mean, a lot of heads didn't do or think of at that particular time, like taking a photo shoot to the rooftop. You know what I mean? As you can see, heads is flaming. You see Kerm Low Word. Shout out to Kerm Low, Beck Live, Monton, and Ski Black. You know what I'm saying? And you see me, I got the yellow, the crispy yellow outfit on with the Jan Sport knapsack. Crazy, just fresh and fly. You know what I'm saying? Um, look at Kerm. Kerm got the big flag on, the cookie pants with the matching cookie jacket. You see Monton, the Polar USA spell out, red hoodie with the cookie hat to match, plus the Polo USA sweats. And you know Ski Black doing it up, USA style. Original, original, that's that official low life material right there. Official, official business, you know what I'm saying? And you know Beck Live, always doing it up, without a doubt. But yeah, yeah, but um, on this day right here, we was like, um, yeah, we had, we had went up on a rooftop and um, after this, after we took the photo shoot, we was heading out, you know what I mean, to Wingate Park. You know what I mean? Because like in Wingate, they have like these uh, these concerts, these annual concerts. Like just for the, the adults, the youth, pretty much for the community. And um, every Monday, everybody will just, you know what I mean, meet up and um, travel or travel out to Wingate Park. Which was like, you know what I mean? The field in Win Wingate High School. And it should be like a crazy, crazy musical festival out there. But um, we used to see ill, ill hip hop artists out there. Like, you know what I mean? Big Daddy Kane. Um, I remember seeing Special Ed. A lot of R&B artists. A lot of different soul artists. But um, it was definitely, you know what I mean? An atmosphere where it was all about the love of the music. You know what I'm saying? The love of the entertainment. The love of the people. And um, look at that. Throwing up the L's. Look at the flat tops though. Who flat top rule in 89? That's crazy. Shout out to Big Daddy Kane. So yo, as y'all can see, I'm rocking the flat top. This was that era like in, I would say like 89, 90, 91. Like, some, like somewhere in that time frame. And we was just crushing it every day. And um, representing Marcus Garvey Village, you know what I mean, to the fullest. And um, always just always making history, just being out there. And I remember like the yellow flag shirt that I'm wearing with the stripes around the collar. I caught that from a spot called BFO. If you know about, you know what I mean, rock and polo back in, you know what I mean, the late 1980s and the early 90s. And I mean, and you was up on like the different spots where they had the exclusive low act. You definitely know about BFO. You know what I mean? That was like one of the ill, ill spots we used to go to that a lot of people didn't know about. But, you know what I mean? If you knew, you knew. And we used to go there and just get crazy, crazy busy. You know what I mean? And um, BFO, yeah, that was Bargain Factory Outlet. And they had like, it was like a men's store. You know what I mean? But they had like a few locations around the New York area. But, um... I remember specifically the location in um, in the Flat Iron District, and also there was a location out in Yonkers, near Cross County Mall. You know what I'm saying? I remember those two locations clearly and vividly because we used to get busy and we caught mad wreck out of those two locations. You know what I mean? But BFO, like, they had all the classics, but it was sort of like a spot where. The classics was like marked down. So it was like they, they would get all the classic, all the classic pieces, like probably like um, a few months or probably six months after all the major department stores already had them. 
You know what I mean? And like, let's just say they wasn't like able to sell for some particular reason or they had um, they had overstocked. You know what I mean? That's where BFO came into play and um, the sweaters was like at a discount rate. You know what I mean? But not, not only sweaters either. I mean, they had jackets, hats, sweaters, sweatshirts. They had footwear. They had belts. They had pretty much everything. You know what I'm saying? But it was all marked down and it was all considered classic classic in the hood and if you got it and you coordinated it right of course you was historical but like in my mind like i always seen like bfo is sort of operated like a Falines basement or a tj max or a marshall's for that you know what i mean for that matter like you know those stores that um would have low if you was able to um go there and you was able to like dig and just look and have the patience to check out what they really had in stock you know like in places like Filene's basement um tj maxx and marshall's yeah if you was lucky you definitely came across some classic pieces you know what i mean um in those particular spots back in like the 80s and the 90s and also another spot that you could definitely definitely catch some classics on the low was sims you know what i mean like sims was like down in um lower manhattan like on rector street you know what I mean? Like, Sims had... They definitely had some pieces. And I remember Sims, we used to catch the uh, the Money Green P-Wing um, logo symbol on the arm. Yeah, we used, to, we used to kill Sims for those on Rector Street. They used to hate to see us coming. They used to hate to see us coming. Word. We used to get busy. Um, but, yeah, so... Um, but this is the ill part about BF Photo. Like, in Midtown Manhattan. Not even Midtown. This is This is, like... The Flatiron District, you know what I'm saying? So this is like near like 21st Street and 5th Avenue. Like, you know what I mean? Around in that particular area. But um, the setup in BFO was crazy because in order to get to the store, you had to take an elevator. Um, I think, if I'm correct, the, 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 uh, the store was located like either on the second or the third floor. You know, but I, I think in, it, it was like other other types of clothing and other types of wares located on other floors you know what I mean? because I, I remember taking the elevator by accident to other floors and i will see i will see merchandise and it's you know um but it just wasn't stuff that we was interested in you know what i mean the floor that we was interested in was pretty much like like i said it was either the second or the third floor and we would take the elevator up to you know what i mean up to the location and the next part of the next crazy part about it is in order for you to be uh, allowed to go in the store, you had to check your bag, meaning you couldn't take no bags in the store. So right when you got off the elevator, there was a person there ready to take your bag and um, hold your bag until you finished shopping or whatever the case uh, was. And when you returned, you got your bag. So automatically um as a booster you already know some of the tactics and the strategies that we used and one of those strategies was like a style we called uh up the back so if we didn't have a knapsack if they didn't allow knapsacks to come in the store or any type of carrying bag that mean that particular uh that particular tool or i would say that's that strategy that strategy the up the back strategy that wasn't gonna happen in BFO because like I said, they took your bag. So you had to be sly, you had to be slick, and you had to uh, always be like two steps ahead of the security. And you know, or just even like the store workers who was like there to try to assist the different shoppers. So you like you had to like always like be steps ahead of them. So, you know, like we would come in there, you know, we, we already know we had to check our bags at the door. So. We would come in there um, with like the sharp boosting skills, you know what I'm saying? Whether it was like throwing classical polo symbols down the leg, you know, um, or what we call throwing it down the nuts, you know what I mean? Um, or no another method was throwing the merch in a girdle, you know, yeah. Heads used to wear woman girdles and run up in there and um, stash crazy merch in the girdles, you know, like some, it, some, some girdles was like, waist waist girdles um and some girdles like you you actually had to put on whereas it was tight like uh sort of like uh briefs 
you know what I mean? Briefs and you can stuff crazy merchandise in the nuts, like in your nutsack, you know what I mean? And it wouldn't bulge because the uh the the, uh, the purpose of the girdle was to make whatever was whatever was the, the purpose of the girdle was to flatten whatever uh merch or whatever substance was like you know in, in the area of the girdle you know what i mean so it was like the girdle was made for like flattening the stomach so whenever we put merchandise beneath the girdle it was so tight around our waist that it automatically flattened the merchandise which made it real uh you know real unnoticeable when, when we pretty much uh stashed it and we decided to like break out and walk past security so they really couldn't recognize um that we had anything because it was it was it was like really stashed properly and really flattened you know flattened real real to, to flattened to the maximum where they couldn't really recognize it. and um yeah that's how we got up in there and, that, and that's how we scored a lot of the pieces you know what i'm saying because like i said they was on us and they was thirsty and um in that particular store bfo the way it was set up they didn't have tons of merchandise on a display on a floor so let's just say hypothetically if you came in there and um they had like let's just say they had 15 anniversary cross flags 15 anniversary cross flags and let's just say they had 10 big crowns maybe they had some scribbles five scribbles uh let's just say they had some um let's say they had like 10 big yachts you know let's say they had some some polo cookie usa sweaters in there the wool ones you know let's just you know let's say they had like 15 uh ski man vests you know they it, it, it was enough merchandise on display whereas if you came in there and you took a mass amount of merch they was able to recognize immediately so you had to really come in there and just you know be skillful but not be greedy because like i said if you was greedy and they and they knew you had something it was they, they was gonna pretty much stop you at the door and then you had to get on an elevator make it downstairs and then when you get outside you're on fifth avenue it's police around it's mad shoppers so like it, it would have been crazy so to avoid all that you just had to be a og an original gia 